Hi everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, I will show you on how you can install, set up, and configure the Tabby terminal on Windows 11 operating system. Let's get started. First, let's go to the Tabby SH website. So that's a Tabby .sh. Then enter, and from here we will download the exe file for the tubby terminal you can click this download and then let's scroll down and let's look for the for this version setup x64.exe let's click to that and let's wait to finish the download okay it's completed and let's go to the download folder and it's here now and let's right click to that and then Click run as administrator. Click yes. Let's minimize this. And let's click the anyone who uses this computer. Next, install and click finish. And then let's search for the Tabby terminal and right click to that and uh, or you can run as administrator. And yes, let's choose the default here. It's up to you and you can play around with a color scheme. For now, I will choose the always dark and close and never show again. And let's click the new terminal. So this is the default color scheme of the Tabby terminal. So the default is the, you will be redirected to the command prompt. So it's like uh, the uh, command prompt of the windows. So if you check there, you'll see all the windows folders here or the windows files. So let's um, check the settings here, the, the wheel on the right. And let's change the color scheme here. There's a lot to choose from here. I really like the dark mode, so I prefer this one. And you can scroll it down. And um, my one of my favorite here is the Adventure Time color scheme. So let's click to that and it will change the color scheme of our terminal. So from here, if you want to add an SSH session, you can go to the profiles and connections. And then from here, you can create a new and then new profile. And let's select the SSH connection. And we can name it as say srv1.bellrace.toolkit. And I will copy this and go to this connection host and paste it here. And the username that I used here uh, on the server is not root. Instead, I am using Belray's Toolkit as my username. And then let's click the password and let's set the password and click OK. And then let's scroll down and click Save. So as you can see, it's now in the list. However, it is under ungrouped. So if you want to group it into a, let's say a server group. So let's create a group. Let's click new and then new profile group. Name is server group, okay? And then let's click again the host SRV1. And then from here under the group, let's click this and let's choose the server group and scroll down and save. It is now under the server group. So if we want to connect to it, just uh, click the play button and just accept remember key. As you remember, we already configured the password, so it won't ask as a password again. Let's accept and remember key. Now we are inside the, the actual server. So let's do a IPA. If you want to add another server, you can go back to the settings. And then from here, you don't need to um create a new profile but instead you can go to this host and then on the right side just click duplicate and then from here there will be a copy at the end and just change it to two let's copy this and then let's paste it here since i am using the same username and i'm using the same password the only thing that i need to change here is the actual Post name and then scroll down and save. Now it is under the same server group. So if you want to add another one, I, I have server three server. So let's click this 
and then duplicate. And then we can delete this copy and change it to number three. Let's copy this and then let's change it to SRV3. Scroll down and then save. Now under the server group, we already have three servers. So let's click the play button on the server two. And accept now we are already inside the server two. This is the server one and the server two. And if you want to connect to the server tree, just click this one and then click the SRV tree. Accept. And now we are on the server tree. So what if you want to highlight an IP address and its subnet mask? And also you want to highlight the errors uh, with color red. What you can do is to um, go to the settings again and then go to the plugins and then search for highlight. We will install the highlight plugin. Click to this one and then click get. And then it says here, restart the app to apply changes. Let's click to that one and it will restart our tubby terminal. Okay. If you go back to the settings, you will see that the highlight is already under the list. Let's click the highlight, enable highlight and scroll down. So this is the default highlight keyword here the error the warning info etc so if you want to change it just click this one on the right and disable the background color because we don't want that what we want or what i want is to use only the foreground so let's change the foreground color here to red so let's find the color red here i think it's nine yep it's nine and then let's connect back to our servers so let's connect to the server group one and then let's connect to two and let's connect to server three so let's uh, try to do a if config so as you can see all the error message will be highlighted as color red what if we want to highlight the ip address and the subnet mask uh, what we're gonna do is to use a regular expression so let's go back to the settings here and then let's add another one so let's enable it and then let's take this one for the regular expression so i will delete this and let's use the regular expression for the ip address and the subnet mask so what i have here the first one is the regular expression for the ip address i'm gonna copy this one and then paste it here and then I'm gonna choose the foreground instead of the background. So I will enable the foreground and I will make this foreground color as green or the number 10. And then I will add another one, click add, and then enable, and then enable the regular expression. And from here, I will delete this and i want to enable only the foreground and i will copy the second regular expression here and put it in here and i will choose the color for the foreground to number 10. yep and if we go back to our server and if we do an if config again as you can see, the IP address, the net mask are all highlighted with green. It's very easy for us to find the IP address and the subnet mask because it's being highlighted with a different color and also for the error message. And it's up to you if you want to highlight also the packets message and whatever message is in here in the if config or whatever message you want to highlight in the syslog. So if you want to see something in the syslog and easily identify the message, so let's say var log syslog. So let's say you want to um, highlight the listening message. So let's go back to the settings here and let's add another one. 
enable it. You don't need to enable this uh, wildcard, I would say for regular expression. So let's say it's listening and I will change the settings to foreground and I will change the color to let's say um, yellow. And if we go back to server one, and if we do the tail follow, as you can see, it's now um, highlighted as uh, yellow. So it's very easy for you to identify during your troubleshooting. So let's say you want to see the listening message from the logs, then you can easily identify it. It's very helpful. Another thing that I want to show you is by using the jump host. So if we go to the settings and we go to the profiles and connections, let's say the SRV3 that Bell raised the toolkit can only be accessed by SRV2 due to the ACL or the access control list. So what you can do is to go to this host server three and then scroll down and go to the connection and select the jump host instead, not the direct. So from the jump host, you can select which jump host you will use to access the server three server. So let's try to access the server three. So if I access the server three, you will see that we will be accessing first the server two, and then from server two, it will access the server three. So let's uh, connect to it. And as you can see, it's trying to connect to server two and then server three. It's just too quick. But if you pause the video, you will see that it's using the jump host before accessing the server three. Another thing that I want to show you is the vault. If you go to the settings and click on vault, this vault is to protect your important credentials. So let's first configure the master passphrase. So let's enter our own passphrase here and then set phrase. Right now, the vault is empty. So let's try to, to server one. Now it's asking for the master passphrase that we just configured. And after that, it is asking again for the password on the server one. And then click remember, okay. And it's asking for the master password again. Enter. Now we are on inside the server one. So if we go back to the vault and we click on the settings and then vault, and then let's click the show vault content and enter the master passphrase, enter. Now the server one password is now being saved in the vault. If you click on the right side on the three dot, there is a show and delete. And when you click the show, it will show you the actual password of our server. So if I click this, it will actually show us the password. There's a lot to discuss with this tabby terminal. But in this tutorial, at least you now have a good understanding about the configuration of this application. If you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. <laughs>